Got him. First cast. First cast. Good one. Good one. Yes. Let's freaking go. There she goes. What a fish. That is crazy. There he goes. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Humbug Outdoors Fishing. It's your boy C. Smith here, and today uh, we are going to be doing a little bed fishing excursion. Um, I'm out at a local reservoir, going to walk around. I know there's a lot of fish on beds, so I'm going to walk around, do some damage, and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, water level's down, but still looks pretty dope. Yeah, right now, it is actually decent weather. It's pretty sunny out, but earlier, like when I was literally walking here like five minutes ago, it was pretty windy. So that's gonna be a challenge today because for any of you who bed fish know that wind sucks. It is the, oh, I, ugh, hate it, hate wind. So we're gonna have to get past that challenge. We're gonna have to overcome that challenge today, um, but I think we can do it. These fish seem pretty locked on their bed, so we're in for a fun day. Chest cam going on now. Alrighty, so for our starting baits, now obviously when you're bed fishing, you're going to be changing up your baits a lot depending on the attitude of the fish, but there is two baits that I throw probably 90% of the time, um, and that is for those longtime subscribers, you guys know of my little finesse jigs I make. Uh, all this is is a Z-Man shroom head with, uh, I made, put on my own skirt and then I attach it with an earring back and then put on a little biospawn plasma tail trailer on there for visibility. Uh, super finesse -y. Uh, yeah, absolutely love it. I throw it on a fast gear ratio reel and the reason why is when you're bed fishing and you hook that fish, you want to crank them in. Um, the only disadvantage of the fast gear ratio reel is if you're reeling the bait on the bed, it goes by faster, but if you have patience and know how to reel slow, then that's not a problem for you. Um, throw it in on a Dobbins 733C. Um, it's a little bit more moderate of a of a rod. I like this for the hook sets and it throws a little lighter jigs just a little better. You can go 734 as well, uh, a little thicker, um, which that's completely fine. Actually, it's good for beds, especially if you're if you're a bigger fish, the 734 is better, but for all around, I love my 733C. Other setup, we have the Nico rig uh, with a KVD Dream Shot. That's it right there. I actually ran out of nail weight, so I just grabbed one of my jig heads and uh, just clipped the hook off and attached it. That seemed to work just fine for me. Um, I actually really like the look that it gives as well with the green on the bottom. Um, and then I have a KVD Dream Shot. There I have a 13 fishing Omen Black, seven foot one medium. Uh, this is like my finesse setup. I have 10 pound test, oh yeah, 10 pound on this one as well. Um, and then a Shimano Stratic. Uh, yeah, absolutely love it. Super smooth drag. So for bed fish, when you first hook them and you don't, you know, you don't want your drag to slip because you probably lose, you lose bed fish probably in the first three seconds I would say probably 80% of the time. So that's why I like a good drag. So for that initial hook set, you want everything smooth going well. So yeah, there's what I'm gonna start out with. If I change anything up, uh, I will update you guys with that. We're going with the Finesse Nico rig first here. Wow, this fish is not spooky at all. Oh, wow. Okay, so this fish right here, as I'm twitching the worm, his fins are just flaring. So that's a that's a sign of a really catchable fish. Wow, it, I mean, it, this could be first cast. Now he is going off his bed, but he's coming right back. Had it in the mouth. Got him. Boom, look at that, bottom, bottom of the mouth, right there, let's go, that was crazy. So that was second cast with the Nico rig, and he came back and hit it. Okay, there he is right there. Pretty little fish, it's about a pound and a half. All right, let's get him back. All right, let's go get another one. Oh, those are big ones. Okay. So when you have a situation like this where I have a, like a pound and a half fish on a bed right here, 
but then I also have a three pounder over here. So you kind of have to evaluate, okay, what do I want to, you know, what do I want to spend my time on? Yeah, sure. That fish may be pretty easy to catch, but you could spend an extra five minutes instead working, focusing on this one and you may be able to have it caught. So it's kind of bed fishing is really fun to kind of learn how to organize your time on the water because you know, we don't have, a lot of us don't have all day to catch every fish. You have to evaluate which bed fish are worth catching. For now, I'm gonna go with the big fish. So there's a, seems to be a male and a female in this bed. Oh, got him. First cast, first cast. Good one, good one. Good one, big one, big one. Big one, big one, big one. Come here, come here, no. Yes, let's, let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. That was first freaking cast. Oh my gosh, okay. Whoa, what happened? Okay, so I just dropped it right in there and I actually, it was a bad cast. My line got caught up and I cast it right on top of his head. The female booked off immediately. The second that thing dropped, I gave it one twitch and that male had it completely sucked down his mouth. That was intense. That was freaking awesome. And this right here, folks, is why you bedfish. Holy smokes, that was freaking awesome. Woo! All right, guys, got her in the water for a second, or him. Oh, baby. Look at that fish right there. Look at that. That's a tank. That, that's a four right there. Woo! There she goes. What a fish. That is crazy. And that's a fish right there. That's really, really fun to use glide baits and a bunch of other moving baits too. But I didn't really care. I just wanted her caught. So, all right, we're going to get her back in the water. All right. Peace out, little homies. There he goes. Oh, and the female's still sitting right there. She's still on the, oh, she's moving fast too. Okay. I'm gonna try for the female. Oh yeah, another little tip for you guys. If you wanna go adventuring uh, for bedfish and exploring, don't wear, uh, don't wear white shoes. Yeah, white shoes don't work out real well. Little cove pockets where they sink in. This is amazing, amazing areas to catch bedfish. Um, this stuff right here, I think is a little too shallow, but where a lot of times they'll spawn is right out in here. So right out where the water's starting to open up. Um, in that case too, the water's coming out and the water's going down. They're still gonna have their bed if it's out here. If it's way up there, they could possibly kind of get trapped. So a lot of times, like little, at least little inlets like this, they like to go right out to where the inlet starts. And as you see, there's actually a bed fish right there. He's small though, but that proves my point right there. All right, we're gonna go loop around. We're gonna go to the other side. All right, so there's a very catchable fish over here. So another thing, it's really, it's really, you gotta use to your advantage when you're bed fishing, is like this tree right here, right? The bed fish is sitting there, but I have this tree right here. Why not utilize it and kind of stand and peek over like this? That way, I can flip it on him and he barely even sees me that I'm here. Oh. Okay. He grabbed it and he hasn't spit it. So I got him. Got him right there. So that was a really, really interesting fish. So he wasn't giving any, any sign of eating. And then I finally, I popped him in the side and I accidentally kind of like halfway snagged him and it undid itself but he kind of, his attitude changed after that. And from then on, I kind of had a little bit more leverage on him. So I'm gonna come down and get him here. And so then out of nowhere, he kind of just popped up. I popped the bait right, woo, right over him. And then he comes up and grabs it. So that was a really weird fish actually. He wasn't giving much attention to my bait. But once I started popping it and showing them that, you know, you cannot ignore this thing. I am invading your bed. 
that that's when the uh the instincts kick in for them and uh he decides to attack it so that was pretty cool he actually ate it and swam off with it and i was sitting there letting him have it for like seven eight seconds and then i decided all right this fish is actually just have it so i'm gonna set the hook there there's another good one he's probably three three and a half what a what a pretty fish you can see the tail tail's a little beat up right there a little red that's from spawning man chunky fish they fight so good on beds too i love it all right let's put them back all right buddy there goes mrs chunky well the wind picked up yeah picked up a lot there's a couple places that i could find um and i could maybe work a couple smaller bed fish but that's not really I, i'm just not feeling like that right now um but i did leave a lot of little guys i didn't want that to be the main basis for this video i didn't want to just be catching one pounders you know on a chip no one wants to see a video with that so i decided to go for a little bit more of the quality fish on the reservoir um but did have fun if you guys enjoyed the video please make sure to give it a like comment subscribe share do all this stuff you're supposed to do for a youtube video and uh yeah if you guys want to see more bed fishing videos please let me know bed fishing is my favorite way hands down to fish for bass and maybe my favorite way to fish of all time i just love bed fishing like when it's bed season i go every single day i mean i it's just i don't know why something about bed fishing is just freaking awesome and we'll see you guys next time on Humbug Outdoors Fishing. Yee!